Okay, I think uh, OBS works now. So uh, today I decided to make a video on how to do uh, support with uh, Autodesk NetFab because I've seen across the internet. One of the main problems we have with our printers are the support structures and getting the models prepared for printing. So let's give this one a try. So I've started NetFab and we're going to import the model. This model seems to be good, so we don't need to outright repair it with NetFab. Uh, maybe I cover that in another video. But for now, just let's add it. Okay, there's the model. Now we need to arrange it. Uh, it's here. Usually use if I got uh, multiple parts and um, 2D packing. Not now, because it's only a single part, so we got it on the plate. From top, I want to have it uh, centered and maybe uh, rotated a bit. Rotating is quite complicated because we can only do it with uh, this applet. Usually, there's a way to do manipulate it in the 3D space, but I can't find it for NetFab. So I rotated it here. Close. Okay, there we go. This model um, is already pre-oriented, so for for filament printer, and they decided to uh, just put it on the plate in a way that uh, if we add support structures, we don't see the tips of them in the final model. So I just leave it at that. Usually, we would uh, position it a bit differently. But this is a bit special, so we leave it. And one other thing we need to do is uh, raise it a bit from the build platform because it's too close. We need supports to hold it, and they need a bit of space to be created. So again, move, and now we want to move it in this set direction. Let's try 15 millimeters. There we go, it's up there. Okay, got the model, the model is fine, it's positioned, so we go uh, to create support structures. Uh, we can do it here as well, um, prepare, generate support, and it opens up the support creation thing. Okay, now I already optimized uh, the support structures for um, LCD printers, so we just going to use my script now, execute it, and see what NetFab does with it. Okay, we can tell it got a few spots, but certainly not all of them. This seems to be uh, a bug with NetFab. It caught this one, it didn't caught this one, I don't know why. But it doesn't really matter, because now we're going to add uh, manually more supports. So I go here. And I disable the support view because I don't really need to see them. I only need to see the um, what are they called? Uh, the anchors. I only need to see the anchors now. So away with that. Check here. This uh, surface is big enough that we can create another script action. So we do that here. Script. The script I uh, prepared and execute. Okay. Same maybe here, yeah, it's big enough again, execute, and here, execute. Now we have a look at them again, and this looks reasonably good. We don't intersect with the model anywhere. Okay, that's all right. So I've gone again. Okay, this surface is too small, the script doesn't work, so we're going to create them manually. Use this tab here, it's called um, Create New Bar. Hit it, crate bar, crate bar, crate bar, crate bar. Okay, switch back to the normal mode. This one too small, too small. This one's big enough again, so we can run the script again. Have a look. Yeah, it's a bit too much, I would say, but for the sake of it, I leave it as it is. Should be alright. Okay, some more manually created 
bus here in this area, some here and there. I want to support this one up here. It's always right click I do and then just create bar. This looks alright. I really want one more here. It's a bit hard to hit because if I hit this spline a different support option comes up which we can't use. Uh, this one edge with polyline support. That's not for our printers. Uh, maybe I just create it here. There we go. Uh, that's okay. Trade bar here. Okay. Now, another thing we can do, which is uh, quite important, um, is we can move the anchor points later on if we find that the anchor intersects with our model. Uh, we can move it away a bit. Let me see. Shift right click is uh, moving the viewport around, grabbing the viewport. So let's see, um, this one doesn't intersect, but I'm just going to show it anyway. So again, gone, and we grab the anchor and move it away. And as you can see, the support stretches and goes away as well. It's really helpful when it intersects like it does. Uh, no, it doesn't intersect here, but almost, so we're going to do it there as well. Grab the anchor, move it away a bit, show it again. There we go, far enough away. Okay, this looks reasonably well. Ah, uh, here are some missing. And again, we need to create bars there because the surface is too small for the script. Okay. Let's have a look again. This looks great. Okay, now that we got all our supports going in, maybe this part up here needs another support. There, not sure. Or we can just create one, maybe it shows the different type. Again, I hate the viewport of NetFab. It's really hard to navigate. Okay, there. Try to create a bar here. If NetFab is unable to project the supports down to the build plate because there's stuff in the way, it projects them again to the model which in this case is fine, because I can remove it here easily after the print. You can again uh, grab the anchor and move it down to the plate, but that would just be a really long support and I don't want that. I just have one more hole here in my model and it's good. Okay, now we created the supports. It was pretty easy. Just let me have a look here. Uh, here it comes really close, but I think it should still work. Same here, there's enough of a gap. Okay, now we hit apply support and it creates a 3D model of the support, which uh, doesn't really work good with the slicing engines. I had uh, success and many failures with that. So, what we do outright is do a Boolean on the support structures and just combine all of them into one model. In this case I'm going to remove the original parts because we don't need them anymore, it's just one thing on the plate. So and we don't need to combine multiple models and multiple support structures so I can just remove it. And the generate faces needs to be removed as well. So combining. Now this is rather fast. If you got more stuff on the plate, it will take ages. And it's done. Okay. So now we got the joint. You can have a look at it here. 
they joined all of them together into singular shells. Looks pretty neat actually. NetFab is really good at that. Okay, so the next step is um, to hollow out the model. This is really important because if I would print it like this, you can see that it's rather big. Uh, this length is about uh, 190 millimeters, and this length is about 120 millimeters. So you see, it's a rather big model, and it would stick too hard to the FEP. It just the printer wouldn't be able to pull it up again, and it would break somewhere here on the supports. Just too much suction forces. We don't want that. So first of all, we need to hollow the model, and NetFab provides something for that modified generic shell. I tried I tried all of them. Um, the strip that works best is hollow part improved. I usually go for wall thickness of two millimeters. Maybe with smaller printers you can obviously go down maybe to about a millimeter and it will be fine as well. And we want to create a part. I don't know what create slices for because I don't use the slicing part of NetFab. So we want to create a part. And in this case, again, we want to remove the original part. When your stuff gets more complex, you want to keep them and organize them here in the in your part tab. Because many, many times you find errors later down the road and just want to go back and hollow it again and do stuff and you don't want to uh, remove the model there. So. Okay, we do that. This again takes some time. NetFab in general is really slow, but it has a lot of options and um, just great to work with once you've figured out how stuff works in NetFab. Okay, no, yeah. There we go. Now we got the hollowed model. We can have a look at it here. Maybe uh, don't want want it here. You can see how it's a shell now. These works quite good. The mesh looks great. And you can see uh, how the um, supports intersect the model. This is important for the slicers that they really that it flows that the supports flow into the model. Otherwise, if you just go up to the surface, many times you have uh, slice layers which um, show nothing for maybe one or two layers and the supports won't connect with your model. Okay, now it's hollow, which is good, but it's only the first step because uh, the hollow model will um, create even bigger suction forces than um, the if then if you would uh, print it uh, as a whole part. So we need holes. And these are really important. We need one hole um, that the model um, that there are that it doesn't create a vacuum and we need one hole that it is able to drain out all the resin once uh, the print is finished and the build plate moves up. So creating holes took me a while to figure out but it's possible it's Quite easy as well. We can just um, go to the part library here and create a cylinder. This cylinder I already prepared. It's um, 50 millimeters in height. I just wanted that height that I can uh, push it through a whole model where it's possible, uh, where like the the top hole and the bottom hole are the same. But uh, you can maybe make it shorter or whatever, I don't care. So, important thing about the, um, the cylinder is the diameter. I tried a lot of different diameters uh, on my printer. A diameter of just one millimeter is too small. It will, um, when it prints, light bleed and stuff like that, will just close off the hole and the print will fail. So I resorted to go to 1.5 millimeters that creates a hole which is big enough that it won't close off by itself. Okay, create it. Can't see it because it's uh, hidden there, but it's there. 
And now again, we have a look at the model. Usually do it like this to find out what is the lowest part of the shell and what is the highest part somewhere around here. Okay, so now I can position my cylinder down here and in the top view I just push it to where um, the clip plane sits because that's what I see. I'll move it a bit here. Okay, now let's have a look again. Yeah, moved over a bit. We want to have it here. Okay, that's fine. That looks good. Now we're gonna duplicate it because we need one hole at the bottom and one at the top. Two parts. I just took all this stuff away. We don't need it. Duplicate. And we move one up here to there. I don't want to have the hole here, it's hard to fill after the print. Somewhere here should be better. So again, top. And there we go. Okay, I think I'm gonna move that one a bit over as well to the middle. There we go, and now we got our hole punches. Uh, we just gonna punch the hole. Okay, again boolean. And we want to remove the cylinders from the model. There we go. Remove original parts again, check because in this case we don't need the original parts, otherwise I would save and organize them. And NetFab doing its job. Again, taking very long. Mesh Mixer is a lot faster, but the results are a lot better on NetFab. Now we have tiny holes where we can actually look into the model and which will relieve the suction forces. There we go. Great. Everything worked. Okay. Good, we got all that. It's rather easy. And now one more step, just to prepare for the slicing engines. Um, we may have a whole lot. There are slicing engines which uh, could slice this correctly, but uh, most of them fail. They don't like uh, these intersections from the supports. So we're just going to boolean it into one solid model. There we go together. And now I won't remove the original parts because maybe later on I want to change the support in this case again and merge it into one part. Takes again some time. And a bit longer. Come on, NetFab, you can do it. But it's better when it's slow and it doesn't crash than when it outright crashes. Okay, great. I just uh, make the um, individual parts invisible. So have a look at it. Looks good, all good. I hate you, viewport. And now we can export it. Export part is STL. Somewhere here. Ripped, STL, save. Oh, it did not complain. Usually it complains about errors, I just ignore them. Didn't in this case, because the base model I use is really good. If you have base models with errors, you need to report, repair them before and then, don't know, make stuff worse. Okay, next step is the slicer. See there. So to slice uh, this model, I downloaded uh, slacer.js um, as my slicer of choice. 
because I found um, both the inbuilt photonic slicer and um, the nano DLP standalone slicers, they are both prone to errors and um, they are fast though. Depends on the model you want to slice. If it's really easy stuff like I do now, maybe the nano DLP and the photonic inbuilt slicer will do just fine, but if it gets more complicated, uh, SL laser gave me the best results. So I'm gonna browse, have a look here, where was it? Stream, there's our model we exported from NetFab. Open it, again the waiting game. Okay, there we go. So I copied all my um, settings from uh, Photonic over to here. So we get the right resolution, um, the right size, roughly. Didn't calibrate it completely now. And that's about it. it these layer settings, uh, we're going to delete them later on. We don't need them at all. Beside the layer's height, obviously, this one is important. This needs to match your printer settings later on. Okay, in this case, I think we get away with speed mode because this model doesn't have any errors. Let's give it a try. Slice. Slicer has a really good um, preview where we can watch what it does. You could see the hole here we created in NetFab. It's important that that comes out correctly. And always check how the supports join the model. Looks good. Yeah, they join correctly everywhere. What happens if we move this one away? Oh, the slicing speed just fucking rises. Yeah. It's not consumer software. <laughs> not like final consumer software. Great software anyway. Okay, this one worked all right as well as it looks like. Um, yeah, there it merges back into the model. Great. Come on, you can do a slicer. And there we go, it's finished. We can uh, zip it. We can zip it. We can zip it. Ah, there we go, downloads. Okay, uh, now that the zip downloaded, I usually I just delete the JSON configuration file because I don't know how it interacts with uh, either nano DLP or photonic. Uh, I don't want it to fuck up so I delete it. Yes.
And many times, right now, I wouldn't do it because I'm confident the slicing worked okay, especially because I watched it uh, slicing uh, in the viewport. But usually, I copy it somewhere. Copy it somewhere. And check again if everything's all right. It's easy this way. It's easy to spot if uh, there are parts of the model which are unsupported or stuff like that, because we can just okay. Windows doesn't let me switch forward and backward before it preloaded all the pictures. Because you can tell if a model just starts around here where there's no support, it won't work. So just double and triple check everything because you don't want to raise the expensive resin. And that's about it. We can now upload this zip file to either Photonic or I think with Nano DLP it works as well. And it should print just fine. Okay, see you guys.